A week ago we had the new Li and Li Uni SL120 wireless on the table. Performance wise not very interesting and the most stunning fact about those was how far Li and Li was able to stretch the word wireless. But they are not done, not, not at all. These are the Li and Li Unifan SL wireless LCD reverse. Yes, not only was I forced to make the graph thinner to make the name fit, but this has also to be one of the most misused ways a company could market something as wireless. Yes, we still got that whole USB wireless transmitter to control the fans, but unlike the non-LCD version of this, the two-pin PWM cable wasn't enough juice. So Li and Li added another USB 2.0 cable, which means that the wireless LCD SL fans now has more cables than any other Li and Li fan before. That's core innovation right there, innovating the meaning of the word. To get back to my wireless headphones analogy, this would be like having a pair of wireless Bluetooth headphones where power is transmitted using one cable, music goes through a second cable, and all Bluetooth does is control the volume, wireless. Anyway, the LCD version of the SLs exists in normal and reverse spinning, black and white, and for this video, all of my benchmarks will be solely focusing on the reverse spinning one. You can get them in a single or a triple pack, though you will need the triple pack to get one of these awesome controllers. This one plugs in right into the rear I.O. of your motherboard or front if you really want, or it can be connected internally using the adapter USB 2.0 and PWM. On the fan side, we got the same setup as the non-LCD version, a quite robust fan, 28mm thick, daisy chainable using Li and Li's mechanic and the screws can be hidden thanks to the reinstallable rubber corners. Interesting to note here, you can install LCD and non-LCD fans in an up to 4 fan single chain. So if you wanted to do that, for some reason, you can. With each fan you will also get this inappropriate cable, that's the wireless cable. We got a 2-pin PWM cable, basically ground and 12 volts for power, and the USB one. Once both are connected, the fan will pop up in Li and Li's L3 connect and you can customize everything from the two color zones to the screen. Just like any other Li and Li LCD fan before. And before I lose myself in criticism, yeah, the f screen is quite good, 1.6 inches round screen, 400 by 400 pixels, quite dense, videos, GIFs, still images, looks very, very nice. Fun fact, the USB port is only for the screen. If you don't connect it, L3 will just think it's a regular SR120 and hovering the screen part will just do nothing except point you to the fan curve. So, uh... Yeah. And if that cable wasn't wireless enough for you, you can also make it shorter by wrapping it around what Li and Li calls the organizer. Wireless. And now let's talk some numbers. The SL Wireless LCD Reverse is a reverse spinning fan, who would have thought? So the air is blowing out where the screen is at. And it can do so at up to 1900 RPM while it's pushing up to 51.45 CFM and at up to 2.1 mm of H2O whilst yelling at up to 31 dBA. Now these are just raw stats. And by raw stats alone, the non-LCD version should clearly outperform the reverse spinning LCD one in every regard. But it kinda doesn't. Letting both spin at max on our case simulator ended up with both of them being just a fraction of a degree apart. Sure, the wireless reverse one is lower, but 0.1 degrees C above ambient isn't even close to outside of the margin of error. On the bigger scale, however, it just doesn't look particularly good for any SL fan in general. Sure, there are still quite some fans below it, but for example the TL LCD reverse, also a reverse spinning fan from Li and Li, with a screen in the middle, scored significantly better. Slowly lowering the fan speed did not make this that much better. Sure, the new LS LCD Reverse one is not that far behind the group of pretty good fans, but it does this annoying shift here. And that shift is actually audible. Like going from 100 to 90% doesn't make the fan really quieter in my opinion, it just changes the noise profile and the new one or the one at 90 is more annoying to me than the one at 100.
Once you go down to 80%, the tables do turn a bit. From that point on, the new SL reverse one lands slightly in front of the older TL one until the very end. Again, not the most amazing noise to performance line overall, but still on a good side when looking at the very big picture. And then we did the radiator benchmark on our 80 mm thick red, where we measure how low the fan can keep the water temperature of the loop above ambient. But we did do things a bit differently this time. Back when we first benchmarked the original reverse spinning fans from Lee and Lee, the TL ones with the screen in the middle, I did radiators in two ways. Once I installed it on the side of the red as any other fan, but because it's a reverse spinning fan, I had to turn it around, basically gluing the screen against the radiator. Great. But for a good measure, I also turned it around and installed it on the opposite side, so as a pull fan this time with the screen pointing away from the red. Yeah, and this time I just decided to skip the first part and just do pull. Uh, it might have been interesting to see how it pushes air through a radiator, but at the end of the day, because of the screen, nobody will ever install it that way. Th that's just pointless. So keep that in mind because pulling performance of a fan is not the same as pushing performance, but because of the circumstances here, that's, that's like the only scenario that makes sense. So just try to mainly focus on a comparison between this and the TL reverse spinning one when it's also pulling through the radiator. That's like the most appropriate uh, comparison here. And it still was a surprise. At 10.8 degrees C above ambient for the water, the reverse spinning LCD SL120 performs miraculously well considering how every other SL fan performed. And at that point it finally reached the level of the TL LCD reverse fan when that one was pulling through the radiator. And I do know that these results are not completely apples versus apples, but a pushing normal spinning SR120 is significantly outperformed by a 100 RPM slower spinning reverse one when it's pulling. This is a big surprise. Something that did not happen on the TL series, by the way. And it becomes even weirder if you compare how the two reverse spinning fans compared on the case machine. For the noise to performance ratio, it was just as good. The SR120 LCD reverse might not have been the biggest bang on the high speed, but it wasn't that loud on the red to begin with. And actually it even landed on a very, very good spot in front of most of the other uni fans, including the TL reverse one. Going down from there, it kept that ratio very, very good. And actually, thanks to the radiator, the fan even became somewhat quieter. And that shift in frequency just disappeared. As long as it's on a radiator, it's, the sound is much more enjoyable and it is, is quieter overall. So what the hell is going on? Leaving that wireless part on the side for a minute, and yes, we will return, I have a few more jokes there. But the raw specs do not correspond with the performance that I measured. And yes, I did recheck my machine, so I have like basically a few fans that I can retest and then see if everything is still aligned and everything uh, the machines have not changed over time and yes they they have not uh, so the reverse spinning fan is an amazing radiator fan as long as it is pulling which would make sense if the SL series was good overall but it just isn't the SL120 wireless is just not good like as a whole and even the reverse LCD is maybe a somewhat acceptable case fan and, and that's really it. The only use case where this series shines as far as I know for now is the reverse one while it is pulling on a red and that, that just doesn't make any sense. And to make matters worse the SL series or the SL wireless series is among the worst I have seen so far when it comes to actual like delivered RPM. Like the reverse spinning one is barely keeping it at 1800 RPM free air. Sure, margin of error, every fan has like a 10% playroom when it comes to what RPM they are actually spinning at, but this is among the worst I have seen. And that aside, the whole wireless feature, in my opinion, it's just a huge mistake and I think Lee and Lee is going to pay it back with memes and jokes. This is everything but wireless. It is even more wireless than it was before. And sure, remote wireless control can be a cool idea. But not if it's inside the same rig. At, at that point just run a cable. You have cables anyway. Or just don't call it a wireless fan. It's not. You can call it wireless control. That would be true. It would be less flashy for the advertisement. But, but right now, this is just peak advertisement. This episode is brought to you by the new MMX830 Pro Wireless, featuring eight wireless cables and Bluetooth for volume control. And price-wise, these LCD ones go for 135 triple pack. Sure, there is a screen, I get that. And I get that it is expensive to have a screen, 
but I just don't see how this is any better than the TL series like as a whole. And I just hope that Lian Li has done this as like a, a test run to see if people would go for the wireless controlling thing. But uh, yeah, we'll see. But okay, this should be all for the new Lian Li Unifan SL120 Wireless LCD Reverse. What a freakishly long name. And at this point a huge thank you to Lee and Lee for sending them over. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server, so if you wanna join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership, so if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, cause you know, I, I don't wanna get sued. Additionally, can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to send an apology letter to Biodynamic. That, that, this was just too much. Thank you for watching, and if you wanna continue, have a look at our take on the NF812X15. If you need a slim fan, Nokia got you. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.